Okay, so if not the case, uh, let me start today. Oh, for uh, this project, yeah, it's only the name. The title of the project, or title of the, your presentation. Yes. So not uh, the entire project or entire uh, report or anything. So only the title of the project you have to submit uh, by 11. OK, so and also uh, I would suggest uh, so start working on it because we will have the presentation scheduled uh, in a couple of weeks. So, so in February, 4th of, uh, we'll start either on 4th uh, or 5th of February. Okay, so. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, we are also having some clashes with uh, the project names. Actually, we have uh, two of us have the same to project topic. No, no, it is fine. I mean, you are, you are saying two groups. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, it is fine, fine. So you, okay, so you can have uh, similar uh, topics uh, because uh, I will be evaluating on your presentations and uh, also later on when we have uh, discussions, so also the evaluation will be based on that. And finally, also one component will be your project report or uh, like how so when you submit, uh, so we will also check for the plagiarism and it should be less than uh, 15 percent okay so if it is found more than that if it is more than uh, 20 percent so for the report you will be getting zero marks okay so let's start with uh, uh, from from the last uh, sir uh, one more thing Yes. So what is this project will be related to? Project, I mean, uh, you wrote no the title that you gave uh, for your project. So that is what you will be presenting on. So all the five members, uh, you can prepare the presentation together, discuss so what you want to include. So I will uh, tell what uh, should be the format, but at least uh, you can start uh, looking at uh, books and uh, literature uh, research papers okay so on that topic what you have chosen uh, and then uh, then you have to write it so you have a presentation uh, and then later on you will submit a report on that sir can you give us an idea what we have to include in that presentation uh, okay we'll discuss it later okay so let's first uh, start the class and then we'll discuss it later Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, last uh, class we were discussing about the effective uh, mass of electron. Uh, that means uh, when you have an electron which is uh, in uh, vacuum or in free space, and you are applying a electric field E, so it experiences uh, acceleration, which is given by your E E by N. So that is your acceleration in free space or normally you also call it a vacuum. That means the electron is free. It is not uh, in, in a solid. But inside a solid, the so electron will also experience the internal forces and therefore the total force on an electron in a solid will be the external force which is the due to the electric field plus your internal forces uh, due to your ions and other electrons or in the, um, impurities or defects whatever is present there so they can also oh, contribute to this internal force and therefore your acceleration so your acceleration within the crystal which is your the net force 
divided by m. So it will be different compared to a acceleration of electron uh, in free space. And this uh, difference is actually sometimes uh, uh, it's easy to, to depict in a different way where you say uh, inside your solid, the mass of the electron is different from that of uh, the electron in free space. So in that case, you write your F external, which you said E, e by M E, uh, or like just simply M E. So you write it as M E star into a crystal. So you say your M E star, which is the effective mass within the solid, This is effective mass of electron. So it is not equal to the mass of electron in free space. It is, it can be different. Okay, so it can be same or it can be different. Uh, and, uh, and that means the, uh, so for the same electric field, so electron might appear heavier or lighter depending on what is the internal forces are so it can be it can make it uh, it may appear that the electron is much lighter compared to your free space electron you know, mass so that means it can be more than uh, so the free space electron mass if we say 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram so the electron in a solid can appear depending on the nature of this internal force this m star can be a greater than me so it is possible sometimes me star can be greater than me it is also possible it is less than me so for some materials for example uh, when we say uh, take uh, lithium for example so me star is two times 2.2 times me so now if you take uh, for example silicon uh, sorry uh, silver so in that case, M E star is pretty much same as M E. So that is what happens in most of the uh, very good metals. So the M E star is very close to M E. Uh, now in silicon, it is M E star is equal to 1.08 M E. So and in case of germanium, this M E star is actually 0 0.56. M. And what is the consequence? Uh, so we, the consequence is you realize when you measure the conductivity of the material. So when we say the conductivity, uh, conductivity we said uh, is N E into the mu D, the drift mobility, and your drift mobility is given by E tau pi. M E star now. So instead of M E, so it depends on M E star. And that's why the drip mobility of electrons uh, can be different in different material. So one, it, it of course depends on this scattering uh, time or your relaxation time tau. Uh, it also depends on the mass of the electron. And therefore, whatever is the internal forces, so that can also change the uh, M E star or your mass and consequently your drift uh, mobility as well as your conductivity. Okay. Uh, and, and that's why actually the mobility, so if you look at uh, mobility of electron in germanium will be much higher than mobility in silicon because your M E star of germanium is less than M E star silicon. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so another interesting thing uh, regarding uh, the electrons behavior in solid, so that uh, we will discuss today. Uh, so let's start with another example of conductivity of metals. So we will stay with metal uh, and then uh, we will uh, understand some concepts uh, that uh, that is used for electrons in solid. Uh, 
and then we will uh, take it forward to semiconductors as well so uh, let's uh, take another example of conductivity so we stay with conductivity and let's see uh, the conductivity of copper so let's say it's a metal copper is better than conductivity of magnesium which is also another metal now if you look at the valence electron number of valence electron so copper has one electron one valence electron and magnesium has two valence electron so if you consider the classical drude's model that we uh, derived in the beginning so where your conductivity is will be related to your n the number of uh, electrons per unit volume okay so the electron concentration so we can say uh, in case of magnesium the concentration is higher then why the conductivity in case of copper is higher not in magnesium okay uh, so assuming that in both cases the mobility and uh, this is like behaving like a free electron okay uh, so in order to understand that so we will uh, develop a concept which is known as a density of states so why we cannot explain it uh, just based on the drude's model this simple expression of uh, free electron model uh, uh because uh, there we are considering the particle as if they are behaving like a classical particle so electrons we are assuming they are classical particles but electrons are not really classical so they are a uh, quantum mechanical particles and uh, and how they behave in a solid this quantum behavior of electron in a solid so that we will understand from this concept of density of states sometimes it is known as uh, in the short form dos so now if we say about uh, talk about electron the motion of electron so we immediately say uh, think about the energy bands so electron motion in solid means so how they will move in a energy band okay now uh, energy band if you look at any energy band so when we saw that so schematically what we said so if, it, if this is energy band so there are many energy levels okay so energy states there are many such energy states uh, within this energy band okay uh, and uh, uh, but uh, what is the density of states so density of states is nothing but the number of states per unit energy per unit volume so the definition of density of states is number of uh, energy states per unit volume per unit energy so it is uh, mostly uh, the symbol is like g of e so this is how it is uh, Uh, denoted so g of e sometimes in some books you will find d of e as well okay the so density of states or they also write density of state as a function of e so remember it is always a function of energy so uh, that is how it is defined uh, uh, and uh, so from the definition so let's say uh, let's look at some one just uh, schematic example of that so here what is taken is we have uh, eight atoms and uh, we say we have uh, probably uh, so if we take eight atoms so we will have eight different states uh, energy states possible and each state will correspond to a wave function uh, where uh, starts from psi 1 to psi n where n is let's say n is equal to 8 so we will have eight such uh, web functions which will define the electrons motion in the band and uh, so one possible configuration is so in here psi 1 which is the lowest energy state this is always the case so uh, just uh, you take a linear combination of the atomic orbitals 
uh, wave functions of each electron uh, and that will form a, a energy uh, or electron state uh, which is uh, always will have the lowest energy and the highest one would be where each atomic orbital is like uh, so this is like in phase all the atomic orbitals in phase and uh, the extreme case will be alternate atoms are so one in, in phase the alternate is an uh, uh, out of phase and so on and this is the always will be the highest occupied uh, energy level or normally what you call it the anti bonding orbit uh, and then in between you will have many possible combinations of these uh, wet functions okay and uh, what actually is uh, when you look at this combinations possible combinations how you can combine these uh, uh, wet functions of electron to form a single wet function uh, which represents your electrons in the solid uh, so you will see the distribution is very different when you are at different energy levels so for example if you are at the bottom of the energy band so you have so this is uh, this state represents the bottom energy level correspond to the energy of an electron which has the lowest uh, energy that means it occupies this energy state and this possible combination is only only one such possible combination exists now if you look at the other extreme case where you have all the uh, so wave functions are uh, so alternate wave functions are out of phase so this is normally will be your top uh, will correspond to the energy uh, the highest energy that uh, electron can have in the band and that the possibility is also there is only one such possibility okay and then the combination where you have uh, one uh, number one atom uh, is in phase number two maybe it's out of phase number three is out of phase okay so many possible combinations are now possible in between and they mostly lie to the center of the band so in between of the band okay so those possibility that there will be these various combinations of uh, electron wave function uh, in in phase or out of phase that number is normally higher when you are at the center of the band so this uh, you see the shade here like uh, the darker the shade the number of states are more in that region and that typically is known as your density of states so we say here in the middle the density of states are is high that means the number of energy states available per energy range per unit volume is larger in this region and if you go to the top of the band this density of states is less and definitely it will be then zero of course uh, when you go outside the band uh, and similarly the density of states will be also low when you are at lower energy so the maximum density of states in most of the band will be at the center of the band uh, so this is just a typical uh, graph or a cross section of that uh, so we have plotted energy in the y axis and this density of states ge in the x axis and you see the ge the value is higher when you are in the close to the uh, center of the uh, energy in the in the band so this uh, energy density of states are a lot of uh, significance we will see some of those significance uh, later on but before that we want to find what is the how one can something like maxwell's distribution uh, you mean this uh, probability distribution maxwell probability distribution uh, no it is not uh, like uh, that it is not a, a, a probability distribution but uh, this density of states is more of a, a mathematical formulation uh, for understanding uh, the energy distribution or uh, electron so we will see what is the significance then you will see uh, how this uh, from the definition it, it is uh, different from this maxwell's distribution the maxwell distribution only, only tells you 
uh, what is the uh, uh, probability that a particle uh, or the occupation of a particle with uh, certain energy e at equilibrium okay so it just tells you the uh, number of uh, number of particles that will occupy a particular energy state uh, at a particular temperature okay so let's say your uh, gas or system is at, at equilibrium at temperature t and you say how many particles will occupy a state uh, e1 e2 and there are many uh, energy states possible e1 e2 e3 and what is the probability that uh, you have n n1 particle will be occupying e1 state or n2 particle will be occupying e2 state so that you describe by this exponential function that is just a probability distribution here what you are saying it is more like a density okay so it is not a mass density or uh, any other density what you are saying it is the density of states or uh, uh, in a, uh, number of orbitals you can say number of orbitals so number of orbitals or states these are all energy states uh, within energy within certain range energy range e to e plus de let's say okay so within uh, let's say the energy range de uh, per unit volume so this is what uh, we are defining here this density of states uh, we are not saying uh, whether these states are occupied by electrons or not okay uh, so now if i say what is the number of orbitals or states within energy range e to e plus d e if my density of states is g e so i would say if i multiply g e with d e so that will be the same the number of orbitals or uh, states within energy range e to e plus d e per unit volume uh, so if i want to say how many states then there are available between a certain energy range so if i want to say a, i have a energy range let's say from 0 to let's say e prime so how many states are there available so in that case i will write this as 0 to so i'll just integrate this ge to de and i will obtain the total number of states or orbitals within the energy range so this is total number of orbitals within 0 to e prime this is if the energy range is 0 to e prime so this sbe which is defined by this integral 0 to e prime gede so that is uh, your total number of orbitals that is present within your uh, energy range. So uh, let's say if I look at this band, for example, so I can say the total number of states would be total number of states in a band would be equal to, I have to integrate it over all the density of states over this GE and DE. If I I do the integration over the entire band so I can get the total number of orbitals, uh, a number of uh, states, energy states within that band. Uh, so there is a very, uh, so we will not go into the derivation of that. So I'll just write an expression for this G of E, so which is possible to derive, but uh, we will skip it for now. So later on, if you do any advanced level course on uh, this uh, electronic materials or solid state materials or devices so you will see uh, we will derive this kind of expressions actually so I will just write down what is the final expression uh, sorry this is not a square so we do it's square to the power d by 2 uh, and e to the power so what is uh, interesting, what you need to remember or know is that your density of states is proportional to 
square root of energy okay so this is a very simplest uh, simplistic way to understand or remember uh, the uh, behavior of density of states so most of this uh, what we have is like these are the constant terms okay uh, so only the dependence of the density of states depends on e to the power half and what this expression what we are writing is for a three dimensional crystal so this density of states can actually vary uh, if you have a two dimensional or one dimensional crystal yes uh, here uh, it is always uh, one should remember it should be total number of orbitals uh, so when i say the number of states or number of orbitals within 0 to e per unit volume okay it should be always like that uh so this is uh, how it depends on uh, the density of state depends on the energy which is square root of e so if you plot uh ge as a function of e so it will be like something like this okay e to the power half dependence uh there is a even a better uh or there is a even a better expression for ge normally which one can obtain uh or we can write uh, in context of band uh, it is uh it to the power half uh m e star h square to the power 3 by 2 so instead of just m e uh, which is free electron mass so we are saying it is uh, depends on the effective mass m e and then we say a so if we have a band so we say uh, the energy from the top of the band minus e uh, to the power half so this is the dependence term of the case and uh, so you can understand then when e goes to like you are close to the top of the band so normally your density of states should go to zero so this expression comes from that but depending on the band so we will derive uh, some of these expression density of states are not derived but we will write down this expressions for uh, different bands later on when we will talk about semiconductors okay uh, p type or n type semiconductors so now we have a idea okay we have this number of energy states that or density of states that is possible within a energy band uh but we don't know whether all these states will be occupied or not right so whether these states uh, will have some electrons or particles or not so that we do not know so how do we know that so the distribution of electrons so here comes this probability distribution of electrons so that we need to find out and uh, that is given by uh, so uh, to find out like what is the probability distribution of electron within this uh, energy state so it is given by a statistics known as fermi dirac statistics so which describes the probability distribution of electron uh in like it's a, like a quantum mechanical uh distribution that uh, we are talking about probability distribution of electron uh in any like available energy uh, energy range okay uh so this is typically a, a, it's it's like known as a quantum mechanical this is a quantum mechanical statistics okay so which is very different from your uh, classical uh, boltzmann distribution okay so if you take a a classical 
your Boltzmann distribution. So which is uh, normally followed by uh, most of like when you study about uh, ideal gas, their behavior, so you say there, this is like a classical Boltzmann uh, distribution where your probability distribution Fp or occupation, or you say Ne is equal to exponential minus E by KB, right? So this is how you write down the uh, or, uh, number of electrons in an energy state uh, E. So it will be proportional to exponential minus E by KB. Uh, that means it is an exponential decay uh, as a function of, uh, so the energy, uh, the occupation of particle in different energy state is a, a exponential decay and uh, and the temperature. So so this, this distribution will be different at different temperatures and this is how it looks like. Uh, but how this Fermi Dirac statistics looks like, again, one can also derive that, but we will no, not do that. So the Fermi Dirac statistics would be the distribution looks like. So 1 by 1 plus exponential E minus EF uh, by KB. Okay. So where your EF is the Fermi energy. Okay. At temperature. So if you have uh, the electrons, uh, which uh, is at equilibrium at temperature T, so the distribution, probability distribution of electron uh, within uh, this energy will be given by this expression. So this is a probability distribution of finding electron in energy state E, which is given by 1 by 1 plus exponential minus E minus E F by K B T. And, uh, and if you look at the distribution of this, so let's plot the distribution here. Uh, so in the y-axis, I will have the energy, and in the x-axis, I have uh, the probability distribution of electron. So if I take so this is how it will look like when P is equal to 0 Kelvin. So this is what we saw earlier actually in case of metal. Uh, so the occupation or the probability of finding an electron, so this energy is EF0, and this value is normally 1, this is 0. So that means the uh, probability of finding electron uh, is equal to 1 when E is less than equal to EF0 or normally less than zero when he is better than zero. Okay, so this is what we saw uh, earlier in case of uh, metal, and this is true for most of the metallic cases, um, uh, like materials. Now, so that means all the energy states that are below Fermi level, they will be occupied, other energy levels will be empty. So that is what this statistics tells you. Now, what happens if I increase the temperature? So I know if I increase the temperature, so some of the electrons will jump to the available energy states. So now the energy states are there above Fermi level. So these electrons will jump and the probability distribution will definitely change. And if you plot that, so it will look like, oh, let me take another one. So let's say it will be like this. Something like this. Okay. So this is at some temperature you want. Now if I, and what is this value? So this is always will be at 0 
five. This probability uh, of uh, finding electron at the Fermi level will be zero point five. So now, if I further increase the temperature, I go to another temperature. Let's say so. Well, it will change. So this is at temperature T2. So in this case, T2 is always greater than so T1. So why? Because more number of states or more number of electrons, the probability of finding electrons uh, at higher energies is much more, or the concentration of electrons at higher energies is more uh, compared to at temperature T1. OK, so uh, the number of uh, of the pro uh, electron, the probability of finding electron at somewhere between this uh, greater when you are more than EF zero, so this area under this is small compared to the area here, and therefore uh, temperature of T two uh, so effectively T two is greater than T one because if you increase the temperature, that means you can excite more number of electrons. Uh, they can go above occupy states above the Fermi level, and this is the probability distribution. How does it look like? But this, what is the probability at uh, the Fermi level? It is always 0 0.5. Sometimes this is also a definition of uh, Fermi energies that uh, the at at Fermi energy. So probability of finding electron is always 0 0.5. Okay, so when you T is greater than 0 Kelvin. Okay, so this is uh, basically your distribution of electrons. Now, if uh, I uh, if my temperature is really high in that case, okay, so what I would expect if my temperature is too high, that means E minus EF will be much uh, greater than your KBT. And in that case, your this Fermi Dirac distribution F of E will be nothing but very similar to your Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, the classical distribution. So for high temperature, so this uh, statistics will again behave like a classical Boltzmann uh, like behavior when temperature is is. So at most uh, typical like even room temperature, electrons will follow this classical or oh, sorry this Fermi Dirac statistics, and if you are going to really high temperature like uh, thousand degree Celsius or maybe close to the melting temperature of this material. So in that case, again, electrons will behave as if they are uh, classical free particles. So they are not anymore quantum particles. Okay. So, so how these two concepts we can combine and how it uh, helps in understanding the electrons um, uh, motion in a band. So one thing which we can calculate from these two quantities. So one is the density of states, and the second is the uh, probability distribution. So one says how the density or uh, the states would be distributed. Uh, the other says how the states will be occupied by electron, whether they will be occupied or not, and how they will be occupied. So now, if we want to calculate the total number of electrons, so what we need is just get the product of these two. So your total number of electrons, that is number of electrons per 
unit volume per unit energy would be equal to your density of states multiplied by your probability distribution of electrons uh, within that uh, within that state okay so this is basically your product of density of states and the statistics whether that state will be occupied or not uh, and uh, the total number of electrons will be total number of electrons again the same per unit volume uh, per energy band what it would be so you have to then integrate this product over your entire band okay so here in ne this would be ge into de that's it okay uh, so total number of electrons per unit volume per band will be so you integrate this product over the entire band so so in case of metal so you can write it like 0 to ef ge f of e into e so your ef is your fermi energy because you know your electrons will occupy up to uh, energy ef so if you integrate over 0 to ef gef into function of e into de so you will get the total number of electron or per unit volume or your electron concentration uh, so if you so we wrote down some expressions for ge and fe so if you substitute that so we can it is basically if you substitute those expressions so for metal it will be uh, now 8 pi 2 to the power half me star x square 3 by 2 so which is your constant uh, so let's say we are at uh, 0 kelvin so we say e for me at 0 kelvin so it will be e to the power half de divided by 1 plus exponential e minus ef0 by kvt so you can solve this uh, integral and uh, you will get a relation between your Fermi energy and N, which is given by x squared by 8 N e star E N by pi to the power 2 by 3. So this is a relation between N and Fermi energy. Okay, so if you, that means if you know the uh, n, let's say the number of electrons or electron concentration, so you can calculate what is F, uh, e, uh, the Fermi energy of the material. So just one example I will take uh, quickly. So if you take aluminium, uh, you can calculate, uh, so, oh, so it has three electrons, valence electrons. Okay, uh, and uh, you can calculate from the density. Uh, so, if the density is given, the molecular uh, weight is uh, the atomic weight is given. So, you can calculate what is the number of atoms per unit volume. So, which will come out to be around uh, six point zero two something into ten to the power twenty two centimeter minus two. And then you can say number of electrons will be 3 into n. And then if you substitute this number here for aluminium, you will get EF4 will be equal to around 11.7 EV. So other, all others are constant. So here ME star, we have assumed, we are assuming ME star is equal to ME, three, three, three electron mass, so 11.7. And uh, this is very close to uh, 12 electron volt, which was found experimentally. Okay. So this relation 
is quite uh, uh, so matches really well with experiments as well. So similarly, you can also calculate what is the velocity of electron at the Fermi level by using this simple relation. So if you say it is all kinetic energy, so you can also calculate the ve velocity of electron at the Fermi level. Okay, so this is your velocity. Okay, so one thing which is uh, interesting is uh, so before we go to here, so what is uh, interesting is uh, the number of uh, or the average energy actually. So we'll say what is the average energy of electron uh, in the band, so which you can calculate as. Uh, 0 to EF, so which is given by E into NE into DE divided by 0 to EF uh, NE DE. So if you calculate this number, so it comes out to be 3.5 EFO. Okay. A, and uh, what is NE? NE is nothing but GE into F, F of E, okay? So NE is GE into F of E. So the average energy of electron in a band is 3, 3 by 5, uh, 3 uh, by 5 year energy at Fermi, uh, Fermi level, which is a constant actually. So if you look at it, it is a constant. But if you take uh, a classical particle, so from here you can also calculate what is the RMS uh, speed of uh, the particle. But if you take a classical particle, the average kinetic energy would be 3 by 2 k e t, right? So this is the average energy of a particle in uh, a classical system. So this is a very different. So the uh, electrons, uh, the energy and their behavior is very different from a classical behavior. You can also calculate the RMS speed of the molecules or the particle here. In, this is, let's say, electron. So you can also calculate. And you see, uh, in case of this, uh, in, in metal, the electrons actually, uh, the classical or the RMS speed doesn't depend on, it is almost constant because this this is will be equal to your uh, N, T, N, S, or your average uh, speed, root mean square speed of the particle. Okay. So, so this uh, concept here is described in this uh, figure actually. This uh, what I described mathematically. So what you have is, if you look at uh, this is the schematic diagram. Your energy level. So your electrons are occupied from 0 to EF. Then uh, when you look at the density of states, so it is uh, some function, uh, so constant multiplied by e to the power half. So this is how it looks like. Uh, and uh, the third one is your probability distribution at temperature T. So as you can see, so when you are way below the Fermi level, so the probability of finding electron is always one. But as you go close to the Fermi level, so you will find that some, uh, so exactly at Fermi level, the probability of finding electron is 0 0.5. And you have some finite probability of finding electron also above the Fermi level as well, when you are at a certain temperature. T. And uh, Basically, if you do multiply this to graphs, so GE into F of E, so you will calculate the total number of uh, electrons per unit volume, that is your electron concentration. And this is what is given by your, this is the area under the graph will represent the number of electron uh, per unit volume within that band. Okay, so this is the significance of this density of states and the uh, so if you know the density of states, 
you can actually calculate the number of uh, electrons uh, within that band and basically you can then calculate uh, the conductivity and so on so we will then calculate uh, actually the conductivity uh, from this uh, uh, this uh, density of states and how it is different from a classical expression we will see that okay any question So basically what we are uh, trying to do is understand that uh, now we are looking at the uh, uh, real nature of the electron, which is it behaves like a quantum mechanical particle. And we try to explain uh, or understand uh, conductivity, assuming or not assuming, as uh, uh, because they are quantum mechan mechanical particles. So we want to see how uh, that uh, uh, is related to a macroscopic property, which is a conductivity, how one can explain that using quantum mechanical behavior of the particles. And uh, we will see some of the very prominent significance of this uh, Fermi energy density of states uh, and how it is related to electrons uh, uh, response to an electric field in any material. So, uh, so we are sticking with uh, metal for time being because it is easy to understand and develop these concepts and these concepts will also be then used in semiconductors as well so particularly when we will dope uh, so n type or p type so we will then also look at how what is the carrier concentration for example so that one can calculate if you know the density of states okay any other question Okay, so if not, uh, so we'll then meet in the next class. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir.